The first thing I'm going to talk about is how the horse is carrying himself. It's not about where his nose is, it's about the shape of the underside of his neck. As you can see here when we pause it, the shape of his neck is in a U shape. This is why it's called a U neck, where the, the horse's muscles are pushing down, not lifting and carrying him. We want to see this reversed, sort of like a rainbow shape or an upside down U, where the neck is lifted. This has nothing to do with the bit or necessarily the height of the head and neck. We want to train the horse using circles, uh, different methods to start lifting himself up. A lot of this involves lateral movement, but this goes a huge way to helping the horse balance himself uh, and carry himself correctly. The next thing I want to talk about, about is the quality of this horse's walk. I slowed it down so you could see it better. This horse is, should be walking, but it looks like if you watch the two legs on one side that he's doing a pace or a stepping pace. Again, just watch the two legs closest to you and see how closely they move together. This is a sign that the horse is not ready to go into a good gait, but rather he's going to start doing a pace or a stepping pace. This is not what you want. You want to be a true one, two, three, four walk, not one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which just encourages the horse to build the muscles that set him up to pace and stepping pace, which is not smooth. The next thing I want to talk about is how the horse doesn't give the bit. Though the owner is asking for him to give his nose and drop his head, he's not listening. In fact, whenever there's speed added, he puts his head up and paces. This needs to be addressed very quickly and before you can make any progress getting a nice gait on a loose rein. I would recommend training in a snaffle bit. Uh, since you have a nice enclosed area, I would get a snaffle, start riding and teaching him to give his nose left, right, and vertically. And then if you want a trail ride, go ahead and put him back in your shanked bit so you stay safe. Now let's talk a little bit about the horse's gait. Here he is walking again, and you can see how both legs on one side are still moving together. Then, when pushed to go faster, as he's about to be here, his head still goes up, his neck pushes down, and you're going to see that he goes into a stepping pace, which is very near a pace, and usually not very smooth. Now watch the two legs on the one side. Watch how they move nearly together. It's tough with a black horse, but just keep watching. Right there, the back leg hits just before the front. Just before the front, and he's got a little bit of better timing, but then as he goes on, it gets pacier and pacier. So right there, you can tell that it, they land nearly together. And again, back foot hits just before the front. And if you watch the rider, you'll see her bouncing. Again, both legs now moving together, landing almost the exact same time. This is almost a dead pace. Very uncomfortable for the rider. The horse is fine with it, but it's not smooth and not what we're looking for. As far as training goes, the first thing I would do is put a snaffle bit in the horse's mouth and go in the arena, and you're going to work at teaching the horse to give his nose vertically. You're going to gently pull, and as soon as he brings his nose toward his chest even a little bit, you're going to release. You're going to combine this with walking over one or two, no more than two, ground pulls at a time. Your goal is to supple the horse, get him relaxed, get him giving to the bit. You can also do small, and when I say small I mean about 10 foot size circles, gently asking him to give his nose and supple. This is harder than it sounds and it takes time, but you will make progress doing this. Combine all of these things, giving the nose doing small circles with a goal towards suppling and walking over one or two ground pulls at a time with the idea of giving the horse's head so that he reaches down and lifts his body to balance going over the poles. This is going to help the horse begin to listen to you and you want to do this before you even start to think about going faster into the gate. Again, you don't want to start working on the gate just yet. You need to work on suppling and relaxing and what you also need to do is very important is once you get the horse starting to relax during your session, you want to slow his walk down. And I mean slow it so that it's slower than you think a quarter horse walks. Uh, this will help start getting a true walk back and not a pace. The next thing to do is never, never, never ask the horse to gait from a fast walk. Until he starts getting the idea of a smooth gait and getting that solid, you always ask for a slow walk and never let them go faster and faster and faster in the walk. They must go from a slow walk into a gait right away. And you're correct. If he's bumpy, you slow it down right away. If it's smooth, you let it go. 
Uh, these are things I think will help you make a lot of progress quickly, but quickly is relative. I'm still expecting this to take you uh, several weeks to start getting the suppling down, but you will have a horse that's so responsive and relaxed, and in just a month or two, I bet you can have a nice, smooth gating horse uh, when you practice these techniques, uh, and you won't have to use any gimmicks, you won't have to use a bigger bit, you'll just use the horse that you have and the equipment that you have. Thank you for watching. If you would like to find out how you can get your horse's gait analyzed, go to ivyshorses.com. You can check out my other videos and sign up for my email newsletter, which will keep you updated for all my latest videos. I hope this has helped, and I hope you contact me if you have any questions.